time, Friday night, when a group of old broads get together to talk about their week in business. Hope you had a good one too. Well, good evening, good evening. It is it's tippy, tippy time. time. Man, I think we hang out for this all week. <laughs> mm. Oh my, what, what we a just, week. Just enjoy our um, little tippy there. What are you drinking tonight? Uh, G&T. Mm-hmm. I put lime in mine tonight. Oh, I got lemon. Mm, yeah, I wanted something a little different. I thought I'd just mix it up a bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of, you know, we hang out for this all week, um, I actually think that's a really good good thing that we should talk about is having some goals. And one of my goals is actually to make it to tippy time every week. <laughs> Uh, it's the little rewards that we give ourselves along the way. <laughs> it is. It is. No, I don't. I won't. Bun Charlie, I'll wait till this afternoon. <laughs> you won't find me. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh, it's been a week. I tell you, I've been. I've been. Um bashing my head against code for most of the week. I've had a really good week, like a really successful week. But coding always takes is one of those things of uh, it's either going to go really, really well or it's going to go horrible. And when I say horrible, it's not unenjoyable. It's just you, you're really stuck sometimes and you've just got to look at it and go, I don't get it why is this not doing what it should be doing? And then work out that, you know, you've forgotten a comma somewhere or a semicolon or um, speaking of troubleshooting, <laughs> just segue slightly and let everyone have a bit of a laugh. What's the first thing I normally ask people when they ask me, if some, tell me something's not working? Have you turned it on? <laughs> yeah. My heater broke this morning. I came in, it was in an error state. So I unplugged it to reset it because I know that's what you do. You unplug it, you plug it back in again. I thought I'd be clever though while I had it unplugged from the, 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 the board under my desk and move it to the board behind me so that I can move the heater a, a little bit further away from my desk so I'm not sitting right on top of it. And I plugged it in and I went, oh, it's not working, it must be broken. <laughs> And I messed around for a bit and I unplugged it again and I came back and I plugged it back in and now nah, it's broken. So I messaged my son, who's an electrician, and I said, my heater's stuffed. Can you come around and give me a hand, you know, do some troubleshooting with me, see if we can fix it or not. If not, I'm going to have to get a new one because it's too bloody cold here not to have a heater. And he's like, yeah, I'm on my way. And he comes around, walks in, looks at the power board, looks at the power point and turns it on. And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> oh, dear. And I, yeah, I'm like, there's no, I've, I know I looked, there's no thingies on the power board to turn the power board. <laughs> I didn't think about looking at the power point. It must have been early. That's all I'm going to say. It was early. I hadn't had coffee. <laughs> You've just lived too long in Hawaii where they don't have such such things like turning power points on. You just plug things in the wall and the power comes through. Actually, that's um, you're actually not wrong there. That is actually part I know. of it. I know. And I quite often plug something in and think, oh, yeah, got turned on. I'm back in yeah. Australia. Good turn on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. You know, I did. Times, I did. I did my hair straightener. Do you know, and Brad would say, you've left your hair straightener on. It was like, well, just pull, yeah, because you can't flick it off at the wall. You've got yeah. to pull it out. Yeah, and having grown up with an electrician, that's actually something that really kind of, um, because my dad was a spark. Oh. And that's, and that's something that's kind of always, you know, yeah. I'm like, oh, no, you can't just plug something into a live socket and you can't just pull something out of a live socket. That's so dangerous. <laughs> I used to say to Brad, I can't just plug it in. I have to turn it off. And he said, well, there's no switch. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
<laughs> I know. I really, I really struggled with that when I first got there, like just plugging stuff in and out without turning it on. But yeah, yeah, but it works for them, and that's fine. It's it was just... half our voltage, and I was my the son's. Idea. A, Sorry, go on. <laughs> my son's a um, construction building person over in the UK. And he reckons it's a fantastic idea. He said that's how it all should be. He said you can't electrocute yourself. You can't. He said it's a fantastic idea, other than the fact that your hair straightener doesn't warm up and you, you know, when you bring mm, your I don't know. blow dryers I still, on. I still think putting the power button on it's a much better idea. I bet yeah. the only thing I really I know do, I was talking about the power being 100 and 110. 110, 10, not not 220. Yeah, that's what he was saying. So Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've always been told that it doesn't matter about the voltage. It's the amps that kill you. So, <laughs> oh. But the one thing I did do was one day I was trying to get the plug out of the, 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 the wall and I managed to get my fingers around it and they slipped onto the prongs as I'm pulling it. Oh, man, did that tingle? <laughs> better than Australia you would have been charred not tingled <laughs> uh, true <laughs> but it's not my hair straightener actually gets hot here it's like yes, oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know when I came back I had to go and buy all new power cords make sure that they all work with my um my converters my power bricks and stuff <laughs> so I went down to um uh, J car <laughs> with my bag full of uh, power power blocks and stuff. I'm like, okay, I've got these. I need power because he went, I didn't need to see them. I'm like, I wasn't going to take any chances. He's like, yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> I've got, I don't know, six or seven new power cords. So I've got now I've got my, my box full of American ones, which will just go in my bag for when I travel, and my box full for the, the box for them to use for my Australian ones, which will get stored while I'm away. That's right. So <laughs> I think I've only got two now. So my laptop runs on an, an English PowerPoint. So I've got an adapter for that. And my um, my other headset runs on a Canadian PowerPoint. So I've got an adapter yeah. for that. Yeah, it's all fun and games. Isn't it? It's just like, oh, shit. But I think yeah. I bought Brad's power cord. Well, that's not going to work anyway. No, they've got that funny yeah. straight, the two straight pins. Prongs, not pins. Uh, yeah. I think UK has the pins, don't they? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Do you know what? I look at them and I know where they come from, but I don't ask me to tell you. It's like yep, too hard. Yeah, I get it. So what else, Jay? What else have we got? I mean, there was heaps that we've done this week. This week's been really interesting, actually. So I've been um, one of the clients I work for does deliveries to Australia Post. Mm -hmm. who aren't um hmm. who aren't delivering well they are but you if, know they eventually, eventually they have a, a, a oh, fluid God. definition of time you know it takes like four yeah it takes four weeks to deliver confectionery three suburbs Do you know and it's just like oh anyway so I've had some wins this week. I've had three wins this week. And we've so actually what, what are they? So why don't, why don't you tell us about those? Um, so they've not been delivered. So we've had to replace the orders because they've either been for weddings or birthdays or, or kids are waiting for lollipops or whatever. Um, so we've actually resent the orders out and then we've gone to Australia Post where they've not turned up and they've actually replaced the value. The wholesale values so oh that's nice because that, sometimes yeah. that's one of the um things with uh, yep. australia post is they've got a cap on what they'll actually cover for you yep so i've got three through this week and i'm hoping to get another two through next week well that's nice and good on australia post for stepping up yeah. to that i will and say yeah. that as much as i as much as i bag them <laughs> i will say good oh, on that, just... that, that's that's the thing they should be doing that they've messed up 
Yes. Yep. And this is the first time. So I've been on, I don't know how long I've been with this Australian Sweet Co now. Four months, maybe, maybe not that long. Maybe three months. Three months, I think, yeah. Yeah. So, and this is the first time I've actually had a, a win with Australia Post. So I'm really, I'm pleased. Well done. That's really good, mate. I'm glad to hear it. I was just reminiscing. We used to say that Australia Post was really bad, right? You know, it takes you a week to get a letter from one side of Canberra to the other. It takes you two or three days to get a letter to Sydney. I, I don't even understand how that works, but it, that's the way it was. So and hey, then with the international deliveries coming in, I was getting stuff from overseas uh, three or four times faster than what Australia Post would deliver within country. So I ordered my new headphones Wednesday night, and you had Wednesday them afternoon, and I had them by lunchtime yesterday. Did you order them from um, Amazon? Amazon? Yeah, so Amazon's got their um, distribution warehouses all around Australia yep. now, and that's just amazing. And, and there's, that, well, they they've taken from... that they've taken that model that they they worked in the uh, North America. Oh, fantastic! They, they've supplanted it here, and it works like a dream. Which also means they must be using local contractors, local suppliers. Mm. So my headphones still came from over east. Of course, yes. But the so delivery companies, the post, yeah. all of that, that's all done. And the people who staff the distribution yeah. warehouses, that's all done by, in Australia by Australians. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's so my understanding have... anyway. I mean, no, someone no, might want to no. argue with me with that one, but. They were on a plane overnight, Wednesday night, and they someone delivered them to my door on on yesterday lunchtime. Yep. So it's amazing. So you said, oh, when you meant east, you meant our east, like your no, east. My yeah. east. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you actually got it from the east coast to the west coast in a day. Under a day. So it was about five o'clock of a night time when I kind of went, I can't do this. I need decent headphones. Um that's and amazing. They were on a plane overnight and they were here at my front door at 12 o'clock, which is probably maybe 2 p.m. your time. So it was under 24 hours. That's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Given that I know that if I wanted to send you something, I would have to allow a week, if not more, in general. So confectionery takes three weeks to get from Melbourne to Perth. I don't. I won't even ask how that works. Well, obviously the carrier pigeon gets tired. I'm reassuring. <laughs> I don't know. I I I don't know. I just really really struggle with the amount of postage that we pay and um, how long it takes. But anyway, so it's it is good that Australia Post are stepping up to the mark and doing this stuff it is it's nice to mm. see well that's a good win mm. so I felt really buoyed this week after our planning session last week like I've actually got some focus on what I want to achieve which is really nice mm. um I've got some plans to uh you know block out a few hours each week as a block and do something for my own business, not just work for clients, but do video tutorials, write tutorials. Um, what else was I thinking of doing? Oh, there was something else that came up. I need to start writing this stuff down. Like, oh, I could do that as well. I should be doing that as well. Um, just, just to give me something else to do and it would be a nice break and a nice focus, but it's a really, it's really nice to have that renewed focus. Bit of um, energy. Do you know, like that that energy that comes from the pit of your belly and makes you fire up and think, oh, I can do this. Yeah. I mean, when they talk about fire in the belly, that's exactly what they're talking mm. about. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's been excellent. That's been excellent for the week too because it's kept me sort of focused on, oh, I want to do this and I want to do that and I need to make sure that I'm doing the right things so that I can move on and do what, make the goals that I've set for myself. Good girl. Hmm. I've met yeah. all my goals this week too. Oh, well done. Oh, nice. and, a, and my bonus. And your bonus? Yeah. Your, your headphones yeah. were your bonus? 
No, no. So we have been, um, Gail Barton Admin Solutions has been nominated in the awards, the VA awards. Really? Yes. So excited for you. Me too. So we've um, been in the category of bestie, which means that we support other VA agencies. So I work subcontract to several. So that's really exciting. That's great, mate. I'm really pleased for you. Five months in business and I'm really impressed. So, yeah. 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 And I think it's, um, I, I, I went and had a look at the awards and I think you know, they've got some really good categories there. They've got up and coming VA, they've got mm. bestie, um, they've got uh, VA team, which was an interesting one. And I was mm. sort of looking at going, I might aim, start aiming for things like that. But yeah, I think I think that's great, and I think you know, it's well deserved. The nomination is well deserved. Yeah, thank you. So, so what's what, what, do you know what the process is from there? Um, no, no idea. I was just you know really You've got happy the nomination. That's all that yeah. you mattered. <laughs> I think um, I believe Sarah Thompson from Online Social Butterfly was throwing around ideas about all of us in Perth getting together on the evening and doing something. That'd be nice. So it would be. Um, so we'll see where that takes us. Um, my daughter did tell me this was equal to getting an Oscar if I was an actor. So <laughs> getting a nomination for an <laughs> She's not wrong. So, yeah, it's like, where's the red carpet? Um, you might even get me in a frock. Really? Um, I demand pictures or it doesn't happen. <laughs> Um, yeah, exactly. So, but it's really nice. And I think it's just nice to be, it's been a long haul to get here and it's been an iffy haul at times. And so to actually even just be sitting here with a nomination and doesn't matter if it doesn't go anywhere, it matters that you're actually recognised that you're in business and I'm here and, hey, I've landed. Excellent. Now, you said you've been in business for five months. You were in business before you went to Canada, weren't you? Or yes. were you? Sort I of. was sort of. Go sort on. Of. We were working. I was trying to start up a VA business with um, a friend at the time, um, and it didn't quite go to plan. Um going to Canada, I was more invested to make it work than other people were. Yeah. Um, and it was just it was just tricky. And then, unfortunately, when we actually did land a client, Brad was really sick, so I couldn't pick up the thing and run with it. And then at the end, it was just like this isn't. It's not working. No. Right. And, and you know, I mean, we just all have to remember that for those of us that were away and overseas, um, our lives were, were, were turned upside down oh, God, um, yeah. and, and making any forms of plans was fraught with peril because we just mm. didn't know if we were going to be there for the next week, for the next month, mm. for the next six months. Um, and I, I know that I was looking at my plans across those times going, well, six months, I think I'll be doing this, but, you know, I can't commit to anything for anyone because I really don't know what's going to be going on. No, no. And it was just so, so tricky. So when I first went there, my plan was to work for an Australian VA agency and work on Australian, because that's what I know. Um, but of course, then we couldn't get it off the ground and people thought, oh, you live in Canada, so we can't, you're not helpful. Whereas really, I I was in Canada and while you slept, like you could have got all this stuff done for you. But, and VAs weren't a big thing in Australia then. I mean, it is growing now. I've watched it grow over the last three years to the point that, you know, like let's have a VA for five hours a week. It makes such a difference to my office or my factory or my whatever. Whereas three years ago, people couldn't see that. I don't, Oh, not that they couldn't see it. It wasn't. It wasn't something that was in Australia. So no, now they, we just they, have. They, they were really were looking at. We want to employ the person. They need to be on our premises. Yep. All the rest of it. Yep. I, I, yep. I honestly think that um, COVID and having to have people work remotely mm. has changed people's attitudes to that immensely. Mm. And I think that 
um, there was always the thing that, oh, people won't work and uh, we won't get enough out of our employees. But, you know, like our my, my loyalty to the people that I work for is a, really strong to all of them. So there's like there's five or six people and it's my loyalty goes from here to here to here to here and back to here all in 10 minutes because yep. they're the people that I that are in my world and I want to do the right thing by. So, um, and I guess hopefully Western Australia will catch up shortly too. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really, really mm. valid point that you made there. And at uh, that point about, you know, people won't work if they work from home, I, I had certainly heard that about mm. remote working in general. Um, I, I live in Canberra, so uh, we I deal a lot with the public service. I've worked in the, well, I didn't actually... I've never actually worked formally in the public service, oh. <laughs> um, but I've, I've worked with companies who have worked with public service. My kids are in the public service. My mum was in the public service. My dad was in the public service. Oh, okay. Um, um, yeah, I mean, because public yeah. service covers a lot of a lot of uh, disciplines. Um, and the thing that I hear a lot of um, or C-suites and executive officers talking mm. about is, oh, if I can't see what my employees are doing, how do I know that they're working? And I need to be able to see my employees in mm. the office. And um, and I always thought that that was a little weird to, to me, being such a self-directed and independent worker. I always thought that was such a weird thing. Now, I do know there are people that just cannot work at home. They just, they just can't. Now, sometimes that's because their environment is just too chaotic. But for some people, they do need someone there looking over their shoulder to be actually feel motivated to work. Um, or, or maybe the term there is obligated <laughs> to work. Whereas if they're home and there's no one watching them, they're eh. But I do. Do you, do you think if those people were in jobs that they loved? Yeah. Do you know, oh, like I. I, I, I think I just I think I think it's the same with anything. There is always a percentage of a population, whether that's a working population, worldwide population, that falls in that bottom category of we're not going to help ourselves unless you're going to force us to help ourselves. We're not going to help ourselves. Mm. Um, and and that's for any number of reasons. It could just be personal motivation is low. There could be other things mm. going on that we don't know mm. about. Mm. But the percentage is so very, very low. And actually being forced into an environment where you had to have your workers working from home, where you had to have mm. plans in place and the ability for them to check in and talk and do all those things, that's been marvellous. And it's been marvellous for our industry. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah so we're the ones that are at the keyboard at six o'clock in the morning with the first coffee with our dressing gowns going oh, I just want to get this done before the day starts I have to say you know and uh, people sort of say oh you're mad starting <clears throat> that early but that then does mean that at 10 touch wood at 10 <coughs> if I want to nip down and go and grab a coffee at the coffee shop and go and do some groceries and take some yeah. time out I've got four hours of work under my belt already. <laughs> now, I, that doesn't mean to say I start at six every day either. No, but, but sometimes there's that just that thing that you kind of go, I want to get this done, well, and this then it's week, done. This oh, week's been one of those weeks where it's like, yeah. I, you know, I've got this thing I've got to do. I can get four hours of work, yeah. an extra four hours in, before my phone starts ringing and I get all those interruptions that I get. Yep. I've done that three mornings this week, but it's not. To, it's, I'm trying to get Brad's final tax done with the Canada Revenue Agency. Yeah, well, okay. So you've just you, that was one of the things. I, I I do just want to sort of dust my nails off here, buff my nails. I have got all of my tax information into my accounting system right up to the thirtieth of January. I know 2022. you are so, You are so good. I'm, I'm just going to sit here and, and gloat just a little because it's the first time in I don't know how long I have been so up to date. <laughs> Shall I put my whip away, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Honestly, do you know, one of the impetuses was actually moving the accounting systems and knowing that I needed to get my numbers ready so that I could just oh. cut my accounting, like have those numbers to go into my new accounting system and have them soon so I can do real budgeting. Hmm. That was part of the impetus. The other part was I just need to get this done. I've got to stop. <laughs> I had a very strong talking to myself and said, I've got to stop screwing around. Good girl. <laughs> well done. I had a very strong talk. And it was like Brad's tax was due in at the end of March. It is now the end of June. Sometimes you just have to have a strong talking to. Yeah. <laughs> I think part of me says it's fine. This is, I think, the last thing I get to do for him. So... Um, Canada Pensions got it out to me late. It went, I don't know where it went, but it never got to me till the end of April. So this is the last thing I get to do for him. So I think part of me is dragging it out because I'm not quite ready to give up that last thing yet. It's like letting him go. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. So um, we get it. Yeah. It does have to be done. Just remember that, you know, it's not, you're not going to forget him. It's not, he's, oh, not no. going to, he's not going to be lost to you. No, but it's like your child. He doesn't need me anymore. <laughs> it doesn't matter that he's dead. It's just he doesn't <laughs> need me. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm glad uh, you can. I'm glad you can smile and laugh about yeah. it a little. I, yeah. it, it, it is one of those things, though. It is bloody COVID cancer. Three Cs, Canada, COVID and cancer. Ah, oh, darling. But still, think of that three years that you had in that adventure. <sighs> what an oh. adventure. It's more, do you know, Edmonton it will always, my heart will always be there. That's fantastic. It's just the most beautiful city. And the kids still still message me and, and I still know what's going on in the hockey. Not that we did much good. <laughs> and, you know, you can get back there. That's the thing. Yeah. If you can go yeah. back and doing with what you're doing, you can go back whenever you are ready. Because I'm Grandma Honey. And our government will let us. Hopefully. Hopefully they'll let us home actually, again too. It's actually, yeah, it's not actually about our government letting us go anymore, is it? It's our government letting us come back. Can I come home? <laughs> I mean, we yeah. laugh about it. It was it was a really stressful time. It was. It was. <laughs> but I will laugh about it because, yeah, you look back now and you go, that was sublime. <laughs> like, <laughs> and ridiculous, all rolled into one. Hang on, I have no income and I have no home and I have no one to yeah, go. Yeah, well, you were, like, we keep yeah, saying this, you were so much worse off than I was too in oh, that God. respect. Just, I, I, I yeah. Was, I was also really lucky because under no other circumstances would I have gone to the UK and spent six months with my oldest son and my and his wife and my and my grandkids. So it, it's a blessing in disguise it in is. some respect. It yeah. is. There was part of that that was just um, just fantastic, and I just and Daniel always said to me that you know, like going to the UK would never was never in my plan. But but at one point we would find the good side to it. And it was bittersweet. It really was bittersweet. Yeah, but you got to spend time with this, your son who I you know. wouldn't have seen. And from what I understand, England is a lovely place to be. Oh, I love England. I love Hull. And it wasn't and it was funny because Damien worked away most of it. So I so poor old Danielle got lumped with her mother in law. Um and but like I got to spend the time with Jago and Kobe, and it was only the other week that jo that Kobe went. I miss Nana Gail. She made lovely breakfast. Oh, that's so nice. I know. I know. So I do. So there was some really, and I got to stay with. Um, so after we finished cleaning out Brad's apartment, I his family were his mum and his brother were really funny. His sister was okay. But his ex-mother-in-law was the one that picked me up and went, here, come and stay with me. Oh. So I went and stayed with her and I got to, I got really quite, really close to his first wife, Carolyn, and the kids and Morgan and Dylan. And and so um, Morgan's kids call me Grandma Honey, which is just so sweet. Oh, how do you I get love that? that. I don't I know. Yeah, the colour of your hair probably. No, 
because that's what Brad called me. And that's honey. what, uh, what he called me honey all the time. And Piper thought that was my name. So I was Grandma Honey. Isn't that nice? So even now when um, they go out and they do something and someone buys, because my favourite ice cream in Canada was um, Tiger Tiger, which is, it is um, orange ice cream and licorice. Oh, <gasps> like a Jaffa. No, no, it's orange and licorice. So it's orange and black, striped like a tiger. Oh, oh no, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiger. Oh. So, oh. and, and they'll go out oh. now and they'll get that ice cream because that was my favourite. And, and Piper will tell you that's Grandma Honey's favourite ice cream. Oh, nice. So, it, yeah, as sad as it is, it's really nice. And... Now, look, you made some good memories too. I mean, oh. you've got some sad memories, as you said, bittersweet, but you've got some great yeah. memories. Yep. And, and as time moves on, I remember the good stuff and not the, you know, last three weeks of his life at home when he died at home you know, like, and there was all that trauma around that as well, were, were traumatic. But as you move through the trauma, I get to remember the things like, oh, we went to the lakes and scattered his ashes and, and, and do you know, like, there were just some really weird, not weird, there was just some stuff there that comes back and I think, oh, yeah, we did that okay. Excellent. And, that's and we did, <laughs> we did do it okay. I, I think that's a really, really lovely way to think about yeah. it too. I mean, it hurts. I know it hurts. I know when I lost my mum, um, yeah. and I was because I was I was in Hawaii when I lost my mum, oh. and my dad my dad had set up the Skype. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, he set up a Zoom call, and he had his his computer set up in her hospice room, and my brothers were there, and I was there when my mum passed. I just couldn't hold her hand, and I couldn't touch her forehead, and I couldn't kiss her goodbye. But I did manage to say goodbye. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's probably I, I kind of sometimes feel it's probably best I wasn't there because I'm not sure I would have actually have been any use to anyone at that point. Do you know what, Charlie? It's not about being any use to anyone, and and I was no use to Brad when he passed, but it was that touch and it was that it was being there and that it was I, I it was said. being there and it was and as he took his last breath and it was like I can't change this but but my soul feels so when my when my mum passed and we saw we saw her last breath I, I sang her away I, I, oh, I sang her lovely. farewell yeah yeah oh. that was that was my gift to her Oh, look at us, both of us now. No, don't do that. Oh, no, don't do that. I can't cry. Oh, dear. Oh, I can. I can oh, cry. Oh, sorry. Oh, look, we're, we're all good. We're, look, you can hear us laughing. For those of you that are listening, you can hear us laughing. We are laughing. It's just, oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> But this is what we do with our loved ones, isn't it? We remember it the good times. We it remember is. the absolute good times. It is. Because we all have and shit it. times in our life, every one of us. And we can choose to focus on them or we can just choose to focus on the things that are really good to remember and aim for those again. And I just remember I was married to that good-looking man on my Facebook page. Oh, my God, he was <laughs> so good-looking. Oh, wasn't he? I know you showed me that photo and I'm like, wow. I know. That yes, was my good looking man. Him. You were yeah. married to him. Well done. Yep. <laughs> this is why you want old broads, right? <laughs> We've got no. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> well, I had to ring a customer the other day. He was a real grumpy old bloke. But I... <laughs> Did you call him rang, a grumpy old bastard by any no, chance? No, I rang him because I'm, chas <laughs> I'm chasing money for an invoice he hadn't paid. And, of course, he's North American. So it was like the minute he answered the phone, I kind of went, oh. <laughs> and I just watched my whole body go, oh, oh. And I thought, goodness gracious, Gail. Oh, dear, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, that accent and just that, you know, like that whole thing. It was like, oh, yeah, I do miss that accent. <laughs> I miss some of the accents, not all of mm. them. 
Oh, that was really quite funny. <laughs> like, well, I, I won't roast you. I like your accent. <laughs> I love it when I'm, I don't know if you get it. I get it when I ring a North American, like my North American people will speak to them. They're like, oh, I love your accent. Yeah. You know, I don't have one. You do. I know. And they're like, no, no, you have an accent. I said, no, I don't. <laughs> no. No. Or they say, I can't understand you. Oh, oh hang on. I'll, I'll slow down and enunciate for you. I actually have done that because I speak really quickly. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> and I always remember Brad saying the first time we spoke on the phone, which was like about four hours, he said, you didn't understand a word you said. <laughs> what, for four hours? Pretty much. I just kept nodding. Oh, God. That's hilarious. I know, I know. We just took him took him about three calls before he could understand what I was saying. But well, we, don't, don't, well, we don't have accents. Yeah, but they don't watch Australian TV either. No, I know, I know, I know. So and we, our our accents are really, really broad. They're really flat. Yes. Really flat. So, and when you're over there. Like I found the, my first trip over when I went and we went to places like Whistler, you could pick the Australian accent. Like you'd be sitting there eating your chips and you'd hear someone talk, whoa, Australian. That's, I was doing the same. Someone would speak up yeah. and I'd be like, where are they? <clears throat> I know. Where are uh, they? That, that one's from Queensland. I know. <laughs> that one's from Sydney. I know. <laughs> Whistler that one's Perth. <laughs> So the, the the guy that served the um oh, in the restaurant at with um it was Whistler the cafe he was from Adelaide but the guy that was doing the um cable car he was from Brisbane and there was someone else but it was just like oh oh god I'm home yeah 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 <laughs> but it does it stands out like a sore thumb too I know but it just. So that reminds me, um, so I was there for two years and I, I got to see two Fourth of Julys, my first Fourth of Julys. Um, the first year, of course, we couldn't do anything because everything had shut down. But the second year, we got to do um, Fourth of July and we went to the fireworks. And because one of my um, housemates worked um, at Pearl Harbor, we, oh. got, we got into uh, the public area in Pearl Harbor to see the, to see the fireworks. So we're sitting there. And right in front of me was an Australian frigate. Oh, yes. And as we drove past it on the way in, I kind of did the, you know how you do that whiplash. I'm like, you didn't tell me you had an Australian ship in. And he goes, I don't think that's an Australian ship. I said, that's an Australian I'm sure that's an Australian What number was on it? And he tells you, I'm looking, that's an Australian ship. <laughs> so I'm sitting there watching, looking at this Australian ship going, do I just go and knock on the door and say, can I come home? <laughs> yeah, take me home. <laughs> and while I was in Edmonton, we had the, um, uh, from South Australia, they brought across the Indigenous ice hockey team. Oh, So really? ice hockey ice hockey's not big in Australia in any way, shape, or form. I wonder why. <laughs> but, yeah. but in South Australia... There was an Indigenous ice hockey team and they it went across to Edmonton and it, they all got front seat at the Oilers and, oh, it was just fantastic to watch. That's amazing. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Well, I think, you know, we've had a great week. Um, we've got some real good plans coming up. It's really nice just to kick back and have a chat about where we're at and what we're doing and you know, reminisce a little. I hope people have enjoyed our reminiscing today. Um, I'm just looking at my glass though and it's kind of getting empty. So I'm going to go and top that up and we will catch everyone next week. Have a good week, guys. Bye-bye. And that brings us to the end of Tiffy time for the week. We hope you've enjoyed the episode and we hope you join us next week. See you later, guys.